Thank you for joining this lesson. We are going to do the surface area and volume of a frustum. So we are given that the figure below shows a lampshade in the form of a conical frustum. Therefore, this is the figure whereby the top radius is 7 centimeters and the bottom radius is 14 centimeters. Then we have a slanting height of 20 centimeters for the frustum. We are told to calculate the slant height of the original cone correct to two decimal places. Remember to subscribe to our channel and to also share this link with your friends. So the first thing we do here is to do what we call uh, similarities and enlargements. Whereby we will say there is an original cone whereby we have now extended this frustum such that it gives us an overview of the original cone which was cut away. So there is a smaller cone which was cut at a plane such that it was parallel to the base. Now that is why we say the smaller cone which was cut away is similar to the original cone. Therefore now we can re relate the dimensions as long as they are to one dimension. For example, radius and radius and also slanting height and another slanting height and also vertical height and another vertical height using similarity and enlargement. Since the smaller cone being cut away is similar to the original cone such that now we form a frustum. So we can say the radius of the bigger cone divided by radius of the smaller cone. This should be the same as when we take the slanting height of the original cone. Now that the smaller cone is being given a slanting height equivalent to letter L, small. Now we will say L plus 20 so that we get original slanting height. Then we divide by the slant height of the smaller, which is small letter L. Therefore, in this case now, this simplifies to 2. So that you may cross multiply with L. And in this case, we'll get 2L being equal to L plus 20. And now on grouping like terms together, L is going to be 20. Now small L, which was cut away, is 20. So this means slant height of original cone is going to be 20 plus 20. This will give us exactly 40 centimeters. But now the examiner says to two decimal places, therefore 0 0.00 centimeters. So that is the slanting height of the original cone. The other thing to get is the height of the lampshade. Height H, this one now, of the lampshade. So what we can do here, because now we have slanting heights and we also have the radi in each of the cones, I think we can use a similarity and enlargement after applying what we're calling uh, the Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem now we work in this case, whereby we shall say when we take L squared and we subtract the small radius, then we obtain the square root. We shall get the height of the smaller cone because we are having 20 and 7. Therefore, 20 squared minus 7 squared. Then we obtain the square root. Let me apply the calc now. 20 squared minus 7 squared. Then the square root. This gives us 18.73. 18.73. So now the height of the smaller cone is 18.73. Now the original height now, the bigger one, here we can use instead of similarity and enlargement, we have the height here, which acts as again the hypotenuse. So this will give us 40 squared and we subtract 14 squared, then we obtain the square root. This is going to give us 40 squared minus 14 squared. Then we obtain the square root. This is going to give us 37.47. 37.47 centimeters. Now that we have a vertical height of 37.47, and another vertical height for the smaller cone which was cut away 
as 18.73. Now the height h of the lampshade is going to be the difference such that when we take 37.47 and we subtract 18.73 we get the height which is being desired therefore 37.47 then we subtract 18.73 this will give us 18.74 18.74 centimeters that will be the height of the lampshade the height of the lampshade again part c we are taught to find the curved surface area of the lampshade now curved surface area now that it is a fraster we're going to get curved surface area of a cone is given by pi r l so we're going to get pi r l for the original cone and we subtract pi r l the smaller cone so we will have 22 out of 7 as our pi times r 14 times l slanting height of 37 the slanting height let me check it slanting height is 40 sorry slanting height of 40 centimeters then we subtract 22 out of 7 multiplied by radius of 7 multiplied by a slanting height again of 20 centimeters therefore now when we take these two areas and subtract we will get a, the curved area of the frustum by 7 1 by 7 2 therefore use 22 times 2 multiplied by 40 this gives me 1760 minus by 7 1 by 7 1 so this will be 22 by 20 which is equivalent to 440 so now when we take 1760 and we subtract 440 this gives us 1320 and this will be in square centimeters therefore to get area of the curved then we take curved area of the original cone and we subtract that of the smaller cone which was cut away finally we got part d the volume of the lampshade correct to four significant figures volume of the lampshade again now that we have calculated the vertical heights we're going to consider a third pi r squared times h which is the volume the general volume of a cone therefore it means we shall take a third pi r squared times 8 times h that is this is for the original cone then the cone now which was cut away pi r squared times small letter h this will give us volume of the first term which remained therefore I use a third times 22 out of 7 times 14 squared multiplied by height which is 37.47 37.47 then we subtract a third times 22 out of 7 times 7 squared this multiplied by 18.73 18.73 so this one will be height we're using height of the original then height of the smaller and we're going to use again radius of the original radius of the smaller so that we get the difference in volume therefore original volume is going to be 22 times 14 squared multiplied by 37.47 then we divide by 7 by 3. This will give us 7693.84 minus. When we take 22 by 49 by 18.73 divided by 7 by 3. This gives us 961.47. Therefore, when we take the difference between 7693.84 
minus 961.47. This will give us 6732.37. This will be cubic centimeters. But now the examiner talks about four significant figures. Therefore, the answer is going to be 6732 cubic centimeters for significant figures.